Welcome to my channel, fellow Rotorheads. This is part two of the Captain Hellasim Do-It-Yourself Collective Build Series. If you've watched part one, you know the next challenge is to summon the courage to destroy a perfectly fine, good quality joystick. It's more a psychological challenge than a physical one. But you can be spurred on with the knowledge that having a collective can help you put a chopper down nice and smooth on a transport trailer. Because the joystick is well made, it is easier to disassemble than the throttle. Simply a matter of removing as many of the screws as holds it together. Start off by flipping it upside down and removing the screws in the base. The base will then just easily separate from the rest of the joystick. Now I want to apologize for my obvious lack of video experience. I don't have the equipment or the setup to film this well, so I'll do my best to explain and illustrate what I've done. There are a number of screws holding everything together, both under the base and in the handle of the joystick. All of them need to be removed. Bit by bit, you'll disassemble all the plastic and metal pieces until you're left with just the interconnected circuit boards. This green board is the main circuit board in the joystick and we'll be using it in the collective. Now underneath the handle of the joystick in the center of the base is a small plastic platform that holds the spring and contains the small green board that is the Hall Effect sensor. The Hall Effect sensor and the main circuit board are the two main things we'll be using from the joystick. So unscrew the Hall Effect sensor from its little platform and carefully thread it through the spring with its wire so that it can be removed intact with the circuit board. Because of the way the joystick was assembled, it's actually impossible to remove the whole thing intact without cutting wires. That's because what appear to be connectors are actually soldered directly to the circuit boards. So we'll need to cut those wires. And if you cut them in the right place, this is what we'll be left with. The main circuit board, the little Hall Effect sensor board, and a bunch of long wires that we'll use to connect to the throttle. After you've disassembled all the plastic pieces off the handle of the joystick, you can pull it through the top cover of the base. But a little circuit board won't go through the hole. That's a good place to cut the wires. For clarity's sake, we can look at this simplified view. Here, the main circuit board and the Hall Effect sensor board, as well as the additional hardware, the little platform, the springs, have all been removed. What's left is the joystick handle, and among other things, a little button press board. We won't be using this in the collective, so just cut the wires a couple of inches from that board. It's a good idea to wrap tape around each set of wires that you cut to keep each function separate and identifiable from the rest. The joystick handle has a potentiometer sitting on the end of it. You'll want to cut those wires too, close to the potentiometer, and wrap tape around the other end of the wires that connect to the main circuit board. And finally, there is the little hat switch board that won't fit through the hole. Cut those wires as well, about an inch from the board. We want to keep this little switch hat board because we might want to use it as an accessory in a future control pod addition to the end of the collective. At this point, we have disassembled two items and you should have the disembodied brains of the joystick with the USB cable still attached. You can gently clamshell it back into the base for safekeeping while we look ahead to part three where we build the box it's going to go in. Hopefully, you've understood what I've tried to communicate here, and you've been able to follow along. I look forward to your comments and questions, and until next time, may the feeling of that rotor wash over you.